President Biden taking a victory lap yesterday after the Senate passed the trillion dollar bipartisan infrastructure bill. The president saying his economic plan, it is working, but just hours before his remarks, inflation data came out confirming we are in the middle of an inflation spiral. Consumer prices are increasing as well, but as President Biden touts his economic success, former President Trump has a very different take on the matter. For more on this, let's welcome in Jason Miller, former senior advisor to the 45th president. Uh, Jason, nice to see you this morning. Thanks for joining us today. I want to play for you sound from President Biden. This is what he had to say about that $3.5 trillion spending plan. Take a listen. Jobs are up and monthly price increases have come down. Economic growth is up, the fastest in 40 years, and unemployment is coming down. So I would argue our, the Biden economic plan is working. Again, that's the president's current analysis of our economy here. Uh, former President Trump also weighing in. He released his own statement saying this in part, quote, while you were all sleeping, the radical Democrats advanced the plan that will be known as the $3.5 trillion communist plan to destroy America. This legislation is an assault on our nation, on our communities, and on the American dream, end quote. Uh, Jason, two very different interpretations of our current economic state here. What are you making of where we stand as a nation? Well, as a nation, I think our economy is going to ride off a cliff. I mean, the fact of the matter is it might be working on paper for some folks who are heavily vested in the stock market, folks who are moving a lot of paper money around. But when it comes to people actually go and fill their gas up at the pump, people actually have to go and buy that gallon uh, of milk or a loaf of bread at the grocery store, they're seeing the real impact of inflation. And why is that happening? Because we're dumping so much money into the economy that's not backed up. And so as we saw from the report yesterday, prices are then going up. It's real inflation. And I think this is the big difference going back to the campaign from last year, where Joe Biden was perfectly content to hang out in his basement and just live out and say, hey, we're, this is fine for folks who are salaried. But if you have to get there and work for a living, if you're an hourly wage earner, you're seeing a real impact. Uh, yeah, and the, the, uh, the Labor Department came out this morning with the unemployment numbers. That is continuing uh, to fall. Uh, what sort of indication is that in terms of the country moving in the right direction? I'll get your take on that, and then I'll show you a poll. Yeah, well, of course, with regard to uh, the employment numbers, certain parts of the country are starting to open back up, uh, which continues to be good. Uh, but we're also seeing some very troubling icebergs off on the horizon. If, for example, here in the Big Apple in New York, they're already requiring that there'll be vaccines being shown as a proof to get into a restaurant uh, going into full effect next month. And this is one of those hear me now, believe me later in some of these blue states and blue cities. I do think they'll move towards shutdowns as we go into the fall because of the Delta variant. And I think this is a real concern. Sean was mentioning uh, this poll. It's out by McLaughlin. They uh, essentially were asking how Americans feel the country is moving at this point. Uh, a good number, quite frankly. Uh, unfortunately, in the wrong direction, 53% say the U.S. is headed on the wrong track, 42% in the right direction. Uh, Jason, what's your analysis of these numbers here? What reasons do you think might be behind this uh, interpretation of where our country's headed? Well, it's a number of different things. When we talk about the direction, this is one of the key themes that President Trump closed out with last fall, that we want to get life back to normal. That's never been a consistent theme from Joe Biden or from Kamala Harris. They've always essentially gone to the aspect of control. we got to keep people shut down. we got to keep people locked up. Or let's defer to Anthony Fauci, who says we're one, two, three, or sometimes even four masks at the same time. The fact of the matter is people want to get life back to normal. What they're hearing is kids need to wear masks. What they're hearing is some schools might not even open. What they're seeing are increased prices when they go to pay for things. So when you get outside of New York, D.C., and L.A., in Chicago, and you get effectively to the rest of America, people are really concerned with some of the signs that they're seeing. Yeah, the disapproval ratings on the job continue to rise as well for, for President Biden. Um, those continue to fall despite, he, I think he's still above 50%, uh, but nevertheless, the disapproval rating, I don't, I guess we don't, there it is. Um, uh, McLaughlin Associates has that there. Uh, and, and, and you can look by, um, Jason, by month. So March, April, May, June, July, all on the bottom there. And it goes 55, 58, 56, 55, 54, continuing to go down. 
What do you credit that to? Because, again, obviously inflation is not going to help that. But a lot of people want to weigh in on the border crisis and how that's being handled. A lot of people want to weigh in on the crime surge and the defund the police narrative that went out for so long uh, in, in other issues. Obviously, the, the misunderstanding of masks are good, masks are great, let's wear two. Now we don't need any. Now we do need them. Everyone's got to get a vaccine and you still need to be checked. It, it, it seems to be a hodgepodge. Does all of that play into this? Well, absolutely. And the one other point, Sean, that I would make is that even in addition to domestic issues, think about the international implications. Yeah, Americans are pretty smart. We're watching the news. We're seeing that China is threatening Japan, threatening Taiwan. We're seeing unrest in the Middle East because nobody respects or fears what Joe Biden might do with Americans' firepower. And so whether it be the economy, whether it be on COVID, whether it be on immigration, I think these things are all starting to impact it. But the other thing, too, with, with Joe Biden, I think there's just the, the feeling that, uh, hey, media, you told us that we would have things just as good as we did, except we uh, you will get away from some of the mean tweets from President Trump. Whereas with President Trump, you actually knew what he was going to do. He had strong leadership. And the country, I think, has taken a, a big turn for the worse since President Trump has left office and Joe Biden's been in. Well, you mentioned the former president, Donald Trump. And Jason, I think, uh, you know, people who might not be following along with all of the statements that he releases here, they might be wondering, what's he up to right now? How is he viewing uh, the economy? And what does he think as we head closer and closer to the midterm elections? How is the former president uh, getting involved with Republican candidates? Yeah, great question. So I had the opportunity to spend an hour with the president on Tuesday of this week. Uh, we discussed a number of things going on in the media. We talked about the inflation, what was going on with the economy. Uh, the president had some uh, less than positive words for some of uh, your uh, marketplace competitors. Uh, I will say that uh, with some of their their coverage and some of their uh, editing of his interview last Saturday. If you you probably should know what I'm talking about. Um, but he also very much one of the things he showed me he had these four massive binders of signatures have been sent to him trying to draft him to run in 2024. And it was literally hundreds of thousands of names of folks who come together, put their name on a petition saying, President Trump, we want you to run in 24. He didn't say the magical words, but he sure sounds like someone who's going to do it in 24, if I had to guess. A lot of folks are wondering that, but also what's going to happen in the midterm election and how powerful the Trump voice is in the midterms. Obviously, I know he's having a rally uh, next weekend, um, so he continues to drum up his base. Jason Miller, we're out of time, but always good to see you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you both. Hi, Emma Reckenberg here. If you like this video, there's a whole lot more to see on Newsmax TV. You can watch for free right here on our YouTube live stream and be the first one here each time our experts break down real news. Just hit that subscribe button, ring the bell icon, and stay with us on America's fastest growing cable news channel, Newsmax TV.